Hello and thank you for joining me. I'm Heather Forgan of StampWithMillie.com. I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator based in the UK. I made this card to um, submit as my entry for the Inspire Create Challenges number 88. Um, the Inspire Create Challenges come out every couple of weeks and one of my lovely friends is on the design team and so has encouraged me to take part in this particular challenge because I loved her card. Um, the challenge itself is actually inspired by a card that was created by Joel Blackman and when you click on the description bar below you'll see a link to my blog post um, there will be a link to the Inspire Create Challenge in there and you'll see Joe's beautiful card in there as well. So I have previously made cards with the herring bow technique, which is where you butt these two pieces right up together. Whereas this one, um, you've obviously got a little bit of a gap in between and I have cut all of my tiles for this tile pattern to be um, half an inch by one and a half inch. Um, but as usual, I have made my card layers in centimetres. So yeah, I, I'm just going to confuse you. I know that, but um, bear with me. Um, I will be using both centimetres and inches for this card. Um, I just thought that one centimetre was too narrow um, and half an inch looked better so I just stuck with the, the half inches, uh, the one and a half by a half inch on that. So anyway, the sentiment is from what is predominantly a masculine stamp set but I really do like this in It's Your Day stamp and that wee heart's gorgeous as well for, for any. So this uh, A Good Man stamp set is lovely, but doesn't just have to be for male cards. Um, I kind of guess that this Magenta Madness probably isn't terribly masculine. Um, so anyway, I've got my card base of Magenta Madness. I have got, um, so this is 21 centimetres by 14 and a half that I've scored and folded in the middle at 10 and a half. So my inside panel is 10 by 14 and same for my outside panel and this is Rich Frazzleberry card. The designer series paper that I'm using is called Artistry Blooms and comes in lots of really bright and beautiful um, designs quite a lot that are quite ombre in effect so it does mean that um you know you've got quite a lot of different shades on the one small piece of paper there which i think is great for this particular technique so i've got some that are kind of pink going into purple i've got some that are more purple kind of going on to bluish and i've got some that are blue almost going into purple so um quite a nice combination there so the piece of card that i'm using to build this pattern on is rich razzleberry again and i have i've cut this to five and a half centimeters by 14 and a half centimeters i think what did it know? Um, I've got that on entries there. Um, 14. 14 um, centimetres. I will trim this down after I've put the tiles on. You could do it. Um, so my final panel will be 5 centimetres by 9.5. Yeah. Five by nine and a half. Double check all the measurements in my blog post, please. Um, so that 
there's a little border around it. When I did it originally, I was going to have it straight across there. And that's why I went with that size. But I thought once I'd made it, I thought it would look better with a little border around it. So I chopped it down. I'm going to chop this one down again rather than um, starting off with a different um, measurement. So I've put a little pencil mark um, right in the centre there. And I'm just going to add my first strip with that corner covering up that pencil mark and just down to there. Now, I prefer to use wet glue. If you've watched any of my videos before, that will not be a surprise to you. Um, I know that Verity, when she did her card, she used um, a tape runner. Um, I just don't really get on with tape runners terribly well. So, um, yeah, I'm doing my thing. Um, which probably is um, a lot more time consuming and uh, definitely a lot more messy, um, particularly for me. So I've got my first one on there and then I'm going to put my next one in line there. And it's going to go over the edge there. Okay, pick another one. I'll go for pink this time, I've not used it yet. And it is going to go there. So just trying to make sure that I've got the same gap. And that's why I like the wet glue, is you've got that bit of movement to make sure that you've got it straight and you've got the same gap in between those two pieces and that piece there as well. Next one will go on there and I'm not really paying much attention to what colours I'm using where. I'm just building this pattern up. Just trying to make sure that I've got the same gap and I've got my corner of that tile is once again lining up with the edge there. Okay, go for a blue one. And I'm using my silicon mat here um, because, for one, I keep dropping bits and uh, getting glue all over the place but also I've got extra glue um, that's going to go over there so I don't want to stick to anything before um, I actually want to attach it to the card so I'm just going to fast forward through these next couple of ones and come back to you in a moment Okay, so our next one, um, I filled that way, so I now need to work that way. And I'll just move that along a little bit. Uh, so it will butt up to the top to be in line with that edge there. And again, it's pretty much just down to the bottom on there. Trying to maintain that same kind of gap. There. Okay. And I'll go for blue. Just lining up those two edges there, trying to keep that gap even. So now that corner lines up 
with the edge. Alright, we'll go purple right away. There. Okay, so I have essentially continued the pattern of the page. just so that I made sure that it looked right. Now I want to do some trimming and take some of these bits off and then I can use them to fit in those bits there. So I have a large pair of scissors that I like to use for things like this. And I'm actually going to trim those ones first like that don't be precious about your scissors you can always clean that glue off but I want to save those bits in case I can use them somewhere and there's only like tiny little bits along that side so I'll just trim them off at the same time <coughs> excuse me For these bits because we probably will use some of these. You don't have to be too precise with your scissors because as I said earlier I'm going to trim this piece down a little bit further anyway. I just want to make sure I capture these bits. Although I do have plenty of strips that I've already cut that if I needed bigger pieces then I can use them. But this is just such a great way of using up small scraps of your designer series papers. Now the great thing about your silicon mat is when you've got glue on it like that you can just give it a little bit of a rub and it'll come out of the way. Um, so I'm going to trim that edge so I'm not going to bother that I've got little bits missing along there. I'm going to concentrate on the bottom edge here and basically just try and continue that pattern over the edge. I've already had glue on it. Ah, yeah, that's still pretty sticky as well. I'll just put a little extra bit on. Nope, that doesn't work. Uh, actually, yeah, I'm going to need to use some of the, the bits that I've got. The first card I made, the bits that I chopped off fit, fit perfectly in there, so I'm not quite sure what I did differently this time, but never mind. I can use this one. Again, I've got a little corner missing there, but if I manage to get that corner complete, then when I do my, my trimming, I will chop off that side. That one fits in well. Happy with that.
I probably wouldn't have normally had pink to pink, but they're quite different shades. So, fine with that. And just pop that in there. Okay, so again, I'll just take the excess off quickly on that, and then I can come in and trim it up properly. Okay, so I've tidied up some of my mess, it was just annoying me too much to carry on with. Right, so I want to make a better job of doing this end here. So I'm using my smaller scissors just to run along there, trying to get the blades as close to the card without cutting the card if I can, although I do think I have cut the card there. And I will clean my scissors after I've finished. So I'm not transferring glue on other projects afterwards. Okay. So I'm quite happy with that. I just want to trim down that side and trim down there. Now I am using my mini guillotine for this because it gives a really nice sharp edge so I want to line that up at five centimeters like that This was the edge that's got little bits missing as well. Now it doesn't go quite far enough with my measurements there, so I need to find that ruler again. There we are. That's 14. I just want to take off half. Oops, sorry. Just want to take off half a centimetre. So I want it to be there. So I'm making the mark kind of on the outside of where I want it to be and then I can try and line up that line with this bit here okay and then bring that down so I've actually chopped my pencil line off there hopefully Thirteen and a half. Perfect. Okay, so that's the only real tricky bit to all of this. It's just a case of putting the rest of this card together. So, quick bit of gluing again. Add my insert. Now, I want to put this bit on here first. And just try and get the bottom border. Around, like that. Then I've got my Magenta Madness ribbon, which was hiding. There it is. Oh dear. Somehow managed to get that, take up that edge. 
just using a cocktail stick to put a tiny bit of glue on that piece there and then I can push it back down. My ribbon will probably cover that anyway, but just in case, there we go, that's enough for a bit. Rid of that, rid of that, try and keep your workplace tidy Heather. Never happens, never happens. Anyway, so, um, tear and tape, that's what I need. Okay, so I want that to go just there. So I'm going to secure that end with some tear and tape. I haven't moved that last faffing about. So, got my ribbon covering the edge, just a bit of tear and tape on there. And same there, a bit of tear and tape. Like so. I stamped the sentiment, which I thought I had out on the block, but I don't. So I stamped it on to another piece of the designer series paper, and I used my Rich Razzleberry ink pad. Just now my Rich Frazzleberry ink pad is one of the oldest ones I have and I'm replacing it in my next order um, because it is so well used and I don't actually have the re-inker for it so I'm going to replace it to one of the new style pads anyway. I've used the Taylor Tag Punch which thankfully is carrying over to the next catalogue. Just to cut that out in the middle. Like so. And I have another scrap of Rich Razzleberry. And bring back in my little guillotine, which has now got glue on it and needs cleaned up and just chop that in half. You could just do that with scissors um, just because my guillotine is there I'm using it. And I want to just add some glue along that top edge there and add that on to this one so that it's basically just got a little bit of oh, I've got so much glue on my fingers <laughs> so that it's basically just got a little edge showing and still lines up at the ends there we go try and get some of the glue off little thin bit of glue And just do the same. There we are. Just get a little bit of glue in there. It's normally better to wait until it's dry to try and take it off with an eraser. But I'm going to pop this up with. Um, Oh, I've got glue on that bit as well. Do you know what? I'm going to start again. <laughs> so just stamp that again. It's your re tag. So. Grab 
have to give them something else. less glue and hopefully a little bit more precision. There we go. That's better. If at first you don't succeed, just do it again. I was in danger of smudging the ink while just trying to get the glue off. And life's too short for that kind of nonsense. There we are. That is much better. Much better this time. So that's going to just simply go over there with Stampin' Dimensionals. I've cheated and I've already done my bow. And I'm going to pop that on with glue dots. So let me get my dimensionals first. Just one up there. 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 Take the backings off. There we go. Do a couple of glue dots on here. That's just the easiest way to add ribbon. Blues. Like that. That can now be put on the card base. Take that backing off of there as well, and that just gives it a little extra bit of adhesion. Pop that on card front, like so. And the final touch was some of the in colour enamel dots. There, and I'll put one down there this time. Okay, so very much inspired by Joel Blackman, and you'll get all of the details in my blog post below. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please click on that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next time, bye.